And we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Open Mic VO. This Sunday evening event is all about us getting together as a community to share stories and knowledge and to get and give advice and to collaborate on problems that participants might pose to the group. Uh, we're featuring a different topic every week. Tonight's topic is training, coaching, and demo production. Uh, this group is all about being positive and supportive of each other. There are participants tonight at all different levels of their, um, all different stages in their careers, but everyone here is a professional nonetheless, and everyone deserves to be treated with respect. So to the new members of the voice acting community who are here with us tonight, no such thing as a silly question. Ask away. So please, no bitchiness, no rudeness. There's lots of Facebook groups out there for that. The rules are simple. Um, I'm going to start unmuting you all shortly. And once you see that you are unmuted, you're in charge of your own audio. I would ask you to please mute yourself at your end unless you're actively participating in the conversation at that moment. To mute yourself is really simple. It's a little microphone icon in the lower left-hand corner of your Zoom meeting window. Just click that little uh, microphone icon and you're muted. And uh, you are unmuted uh, by just clicking it again. Second rule, be nice. Third rule, we're recording. And the recordings are going to be posted to YouTube. I had not been recording the first couple of, uh, of evenings. And I had a bunch of people, well, a bunch, half a dozen people ask me about whether they could listen to it uh, afterwards. So I am recording and I will post it to YouTube. Uh, I want to take a moment right now to thank VoiceZam.com. Uh, VoiceZam.com is sponsoring tonight's Open Mic VO. VoiceZam is a unique demo player that, amongst a hundred other things, um, allows casting directors to zero in on very specific reads in your demo. You can learn all about it at voicezam.com and use promo code OPENMIC, promo code OPENMIC, to double the length of your free trial. So let's get started. Tonight's topic is training, coaching, and demo production. Once you see that I've unmuted you, please feel free to ask the first question or to offer us the first story. Uh, remember to mute yourself in the lower left-hand corner of the screen if you're not going to be speaking right away. So, I should also mention that you need to be using the very latest version of the Zoom software. If you don't have the latest version of the Zoom software, I can't unmute you. So um, you're welcome to uh, leave tonight's webinar, go download the latest software. I think it's zoom.us slash support slash download, I think is what it is. And it will uh, download the software and install it for you. If you don't, you can certainly listen in tonight, but you won't be able to actually participate in the conversation. Once again, just unmuting people here. And if you want to be the first to uh, offer us something tonight, feel free to do so. We're talking about training, coaching, demo production. Sorry, we're getting there slowly. Quite a few of you tonight do need to upgrade your Zoom. As I'm going through here and trying to unmute you, there's a number that I can't.
So once again, once you see that you are unmuted, if you're not going to be actively participating in the conversation to get us started, just remember to mute yourself. It's the little microphone icon in the lower left-hand corner. Okay, I think I, everyone that I can unmute is unmuted. Those of you who see that you are not unmuted yet, it's because you don't have the latest version of the Zoom software installed, and you're going to have to exit the webinar, quickly download the new Zoom software at zoom.us slash support slash download. I think that's what it is. And uh, then it takes literally 15 or 20 seconds to install and then come on back in. So again, tonight, training, coaching, and demo production. Who wants to get us started? I have a question I'd like to throw out there then. What is the going rate out there for a commercial demo? If you, you know, I'm just talking about demo prep and production, no kind of coaching sessions to start. Uh, I'm assuming that you're already a working voice actor and you just want to get a new demo produced in a new genre as an example. What's the going rate out there? Uh, like who's had demos produced recently? And um, you, know, you don't have to disclose where you had it done, but I'd be curious to know how much you paid. Oops. I can answer that if you want. Hey, Juliet. Hello. <laughs> I hate to be the first one, but... Um... I'm glad you're the first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> the going rate, I would say, is anywhere from 1500 to 2000 Some people charge $2,500. Um, so that's the going rate if you want to get a decent demo made. So. Uh, sorry, what, what was that amount again? Between, I would say between 1500 and 2000 and Yeah. Um, I think that that is not an unreasonable rate for, you know, you're, you're approaching the higher end there, though, I think. Um, 2000 yeah, but not the 1500 that's Yeah, 1500 you're right, is probably a bit of the, that, that's, a, that's a pretty average rate, I think. I know, I know there's lots of places out there that do demos cheaper but i'm also a big believer particularly in demos is you get what you pay for um there's one thing um that if you're going to do more than one demo then they usually give you a break on the price so depending on who it is obviously i don't know about everybody but um very true yeah, yeah, certainly, so. if you're going to record two genres at the same time, you save a lot of money on studio costs, mm -hmm. et cetera. And they generally are willing to cut you a bit of a break. I know that uh, it's been some time now since I had my commercial and broadcast narration demos done, and I paid a lot of money for them at the time. Um, I think I paid $2,500 for my commercial and almost the same for my broadcast narration um, but I got a deal from uh, from the guy that produced my demos because I did them both at the same time yeah uh, Debbie Irwin just uh, pipes in on the uh, chat box saying that her last commercial demo cost her around two thousand dollars and she also mentions that she's in the process of getting three different narration demos, one corporate, one medical, one explainer video, and all three of them are going to be done for 2100 which sounds like a pretty good deal, actually. Uh, that's, that sounds pretty, pretty awesome, actually, to get three narration demos. Anyone else have any thoughts out there on? I, I was going to say that um, that um, uh, and it's nice to nice to see you all back. Um, anyhow, I got my commercial demo uh, a few years ago, and um, I paid twelve hundred 
the guy who has a really good reputation down in LA. I went to LA and, um, and it, obvious, it definitely needs some updating. So I contacted him and I thought, well, I'm going to have to go and, you know, re-record a whole new thing and do a whole new thing. And he said, no, no, he, you, you, since you came and you did your initial demo with me, he's only going to charge me a hundred bucks an hour and I'll re-record and kind of, uh, you know, kind of perk it up. So, That's amazing. Yeah, I, I was thrilled. Trust me. <laughs> so I, actually, so, I'll, I'll I'll throw out there is that my commercial and broadcast narration demos were done by a guy named Chuck Duran, and uh -huh. Chuck was incredibly generous when I I needed to go back and update my demos. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, he yeah. he he did them for like the updates, which is just. Basically, I had done some real projects, and I and I was really quite happy with some of them. And I wanted just little snippets, uh, you know, put into my new in, into my demo, and then uh -huh. remove a couple of old pieces. That right, I recorded. right, that and, were dated. Yeah, yeah, and he did it for next to nothing, just because I recorded my demos with him in the first place, which was awesome. Yeah, and that's that's what this guy's going to do for me too. So I was Fantastic. really really happy about that. And I I you know I the one thing I have to say about um, the guy who did my demos, and that is, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, heavy production in it. Um, and and sometimes that's that sounds really cool, uh, but I think in sometimes in the long run, um, it it kind of covers what what you're really doing and it seemed like my demos have a pretty good shelf life uh because of the very careful uh production um that there it's you have just enough um and um and this guy just did a really good job and so yeah i was just thrilled so i'm gonna go down get my commercial demo you know facelifted and then and for you know and he's gonna uh, kind of uh, work on um a propping up my character demo too, which is a little weak. So, um, so yeah, I, I was thrilled. Do you want to name names? Uh, <laughs> up, to, up to you, but you might want to give your, give your friend some props. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I don't have his name here right now, okay. um, but uh, I will, you know, I'll get a hold of it and, and, and maybe next, next Sunday I'll, I'll toss it out there. Sounds he's great. Really a great guy. He was a booth director at one of the major agencies down there. So he really, um, really did a nice job for me. Very cool. Who else has some thoughts on demo production? Like when is the most, when's the time you updated your demo uh, most recently? And how much did you pay for your demo? And you can uh, name names if you want to. Ap apologies for the, the uh, quality of my microphone, but um, I, I've seen a number of studios now who are offering the service of, uh, if you um, uh, have a home recording studio and you can make a serviceable demo, you can self-direct a serviceable demo, they'll actually take in post-production uh, and uh, make it sound a heck of a lot better than I can do here at home. You yeah, I, I noticed that Edge Studio is doing that right now, and they, I think normally they charge $500 for that service, and I think for a, a Cyber Monday special, they have it on for $400, which is really a pretty good deal. Um, I haven't been associated with Edge in many months now, but uh, the whole idea when we first came up with that concept was that there's lots of experienced voice actors out there who either have other coaches or they have the ability to self-direct and might want to have a demo produced in a different genre. Like they already have a narration demo, but they wanted one specific to explainer videos like Debbie had mentioned earlier. And, and that was the reason that Edge Studio came up with that product originally. And uh, I think that you know, it's a pretty good deal at 500. It's a very good deal at 400. And I know that there are other studios out there that offer uh, similar, similar services where they will take your dry reads and produce them and add sound effects and appropriate, <clears throat> et cetera. Yes, if, if the, if the uh, dry reads are of high quality. Correct. Uh, how you doing, Joe? 
Good, Graham. How are you? Uh, fantastic. So glad that you're joining us here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank this you. is Joe Lesh, who's a fantastic coach down in, down in the South. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> it's so nice to see you here, Joe. It's good to see you too, Graham. Yeah. Uh, Nora, have I been involved with Edge for many months myself? Uh, Joe um, makes a very good point, though, is that, uh, you know, my understanding at Edge, if it, if it hasn't changed since I had been associated with them, is that they do listen pretty carefully to the production quality. Uh, and they, and they want to make sure that the, uh, the raw material that their engineers are working with when they're mixing the demos is of, you know, top-notch quality. And if you don't pass muster, they won't do it for you. So yeah. I, I think that that's an that appropriate, for them. That's yeah, an appropriate route for them to take. Absolutely. Uh, still trying to unmute some people here. Again, if you see that you're not unmuted, it's because of one of two things. Either I just haven't gotten there yet, or you aren't running the latest version of Zoom. And unfortunately, in order for me to unmute you, you need to be running the latest version of the Zoom software. It's zoom.us slash support slash download. And uh, it's only a 30 second, uh, 30 second thing to install it and then you can come on back in and rejoin the webinar. Or if I may add, if you just click on uh, Zoom at the top and you're you know, below your preferences, it says check for updates and you can update it that way, right? you know, without having to go to a new browser. Ah, fantastic. Then, Thank you so much for that, Debbie. I hadn't even thought of that, but of course. After it finishes updating and then you say, you know, launch or whatever, then it disconnects you from this meeting and, you know, reopens and then you can rejoin. So Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Who else I'll had a demo you. produced recently? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. Debbie, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that I've, I've been in the process lately of redoing a number of demos and one that I did... Um, uh, the commercial demo earlier this year and it was a very very different experience working with that guy than it is right now the guy who I'm working with now doing these three and it's sort of you know raised a lot of questions for me about you know my assumptions going into it what it was that I thought that you know the uh, the demo producer was supposed to do going to do um, how much responsibility I should have had about being clear on, um, you know, wanting direction or, or, you know, I mean, the better somebody knows you, I think the better job they're going to be able to do to bring out the best in you and that which they know of you as opposed to someone who, um, you know, kind of has his way of doing things and, and that's what he's going to do for you is his way of, of doing things. Okay, Debbie, um, this, this is interesting. I'd like to explore this a little bit more. What are some of the assumptions that you made going in that turned out to be misassumptions? Um, that I would be directed more. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I think I wasn't, I, I didn't get um, a lot of direction. Even did though you, we were working so did you together, did you supply your own scripts, or did the producer no, supply your scripts? He, he gave me he gave me scripts, and that was another thing. It's like, well, how do you feel about the scripts? Do you like the scripts? Do they speak to you? Do they, you know, do you, you know, the way they're written? And first of all, I believe it's it's great to have somebody who is writing scripts for you, as opposed to, you know, taking content that you've heard in other places. Um, so. You know, and is there enough variety in those scripts so that you're really able to get good range? And, you know, for me, the challenge has always been getting enough colors of the palette into my demos. Um, and, you know, and then also, like, there's something that I like to achieve, and that is a certain arc to a demo so that it ends, you know, it, it opens strong. And but also ends leaving you with a smile, and that's not an easy thing to achieve. Um, and I don't think I'm there yet in any of my three that I'm <laughs> doing right now. Um, you know who I hear is, uh, and I didn't know this about him, but he's a very good writer. Uh, and I've had many people, like um, 
six or eight different people completely unprompted mentioned this to me that they were very happy with the scripts and that's j michael collins who is a guy that's only fairly recently gotten into the demo production business but he, he seems to be doing a reasonable number of them and the ones i've heard have been pretty good uh leslie uh sent me something through the chat window here uh, I had an e-learning demo produced by J. Michael Collins. Uh, it was $1,500. He directed through Zoom. Uh, he, he had it produced. He added a little bit of music and a couple of spots, et cetera. Uh, yeah, and that, that was what Leslie was saying. And, but my understanding, Debbie, is that J. Michael is really quite good at that arc that you refer to, which I totally agree with, um, and, and that his demos always seem to end with some sort of, you know, lame joke or pun or something that really leaves people smiling. So, uh, um, hello, hello, Hi, Juliet. Okay, so I wasn't going to mention any names, but since you brought it up, I will. Um, I just recently did six demos with J. Michael. Mm -hmm. And I'm recording two more next week. So um, so you're obviously happy with them if you've gone back for two more. Well, it's I've built a relationship with him. I've got to know him pretty well. Mm -hmm. He's very collaborative mm -hmm. because I've had some bad experiences before. And I told him at the very beginning that, you know, you're going to, if we're going to work together, I'm not just going to say you're the producer. I accept what you're giving me because I'll accept what you're giving me and trust your expertise, um, but I want to have my 10 cents worth too. And it's always been like that. And I say to him, pull me back if I'm saying, telling you something wrong. I helped rewrite a couple of the spots and picked a couple of spots that I didn't like. Um, you know, I picked alternatives, but he is a really good writer. And yes. um, that's the thing. He because he works in the field and he produces demos, he knows what the marketplace is doing out there. And that makes a huge difference. And I mean, I don't care what you say, how good a lot of these people are, they're not in the trenches. And um, so I think that does make a huge difference. And the demo I'm doing next week with him, actually, um, who I'm doing too, doing a telephony demo, because I've never had one, but I'm doing that six second demo that people have been talking about and mm -hmm. <laughs> finally decided to do it because I do think, and if you start listening to more commercials, especially on TV, I've noticed lately that the voiceover is not telling so much of a story. They're coming in at the end. And um, that's where the six second demo comes in. It's also for the YouTube pre-rolls where people don't want to listen to a whole long thing. You know, I'm, to I'm totally convinced Jay Michael came up with the six second demo because it, no one else is doing it and he thought that he could corner the marketplace on it. But, uh, but he didn't, do, he made that might be the case, but he's right on with his um, ideas about what's happening in the market. He, he really knows it and he understands it. And we've all been too complacent the past year. And that's why some of the things are happening that are happening now that, um, probably we could have been ahead of the curve for ourselves, I mean. So, um, you know, I, I can't really say anything wrong about him. He's... Um... No, J. Michael, and I know J. Michael quite well, uh, mm -hmm. and he is collaborative like that by nature. That's just the yeah. way J. Michael is. He's not... Uh, I um, He isn't one to you know, push his opinion over top of somebody else's in my, in my experience. He's certainly, a, you know, a very successful voice actor and is becoming a very successful demo producer, but it certainly isn't because he goes and says, and this is the way I think you should do it. That's just not J. Michael's style. Um, well, he directs you though. I mean, he, he does direct you. I mean, when you, I mean, that I need direction. I hate not having a director. That's why I, I'm, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I hate it. We have to do it so much, but 
you know, my reads come out a lot better when I have a director. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that he's, he doesn't do the, the direction, and it's important that he do so. But yeah. when it comes to the selection of the pieces or the ordering of the pieces, um, yeah. he's going to always be collaborative versus just, yeah. uh, you, know, here, you know, here's the demo. I hope you like it because that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not his way. Um, Jim is asking, can a demo ever be too flashy or too overproduced? And I think that that's a valid question. Um, anyone out there have any thoughts on this? Can a demo ever be too flashy or too overproduced? Is it possible to overproduce yes. a demo? Yes, it is. Especially if you go to a music producer to have your voiceover demo produced. So... Joe, you know, in the last example that you can think of, of a, a demo you heard that was overproduced, what are the kinds of warning signs that we should be looking for that indicate that, you know what, this is just a step too far? Um, in most cases, it's a matter of the uh, music or the sound effects being featured more than the uh, voiceover. Because uh, you can tell when uh, someone's gone to a, a music uh, producer to have their demo done because it just sounds like um, the music was featured rather than the voice. And that's uh, one that I heard just last week. One, that, one thing that I've noticed in many cases is that when you listen to finished television spots, often the voice is a little more subdued than us voice actors would sometimes want to hear is that the, the voice is sometimes in the mix with the music um, a, a, a little bit more in the background versus when demos are produced, regardless of that's the way a real TV spot is supposed to be mixed or not. And, and I've heard from producers that that is the way they're supposed to be mixed because you always are seeing the visual in concert with hearing the voice. Um, for demos, the, the, the vocal should probably be mixed up a little higher in the mix than, than normal. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to uh, just kind of throw my two cents in worth. It seems to me that uh, I think there's a lot of overproduction in character demos. And um, it really, sometimes it, it gets to the point where the, the actual performance gets so buried um, and, and whenever I hear something like that, I just kind of think to myself that, you know, that perhaps the performer is insecure and that, you know, they're, they're trying to kind of cover the performance because they, they're just not as confident as they should be and, or they're doing a demo before they're really ready. Um, um, and also, also I, I have the name if anybody's interested in the, in the gentleman that does my demos. His name is Mark McIntyre. It's M-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E. And his um, website is mmvoiceover, that's all one word, dot com. So it's mmvoiceover.com. And he's been really wonderful. He gives great direction. He provides the scripted material and works very hard to craft that individual um, demo you know I I didn't think there was many demo producers of note in in America that I hadn't at least heard of at some point but I've never heard of Mark McIntyre now I'm gonna have to go check out his website you so gotta go check it out <laughs> uh, Debbie was was making a comment about J Michael Collins uh, J. Michael is of the opinion that the entire demo should be produced. And, and Debbie, I assume you're referring to commercial demos. Um, uh, no, no part of it actually. should be just dry voice. N no, actually. Um, I'm referring to uh, narration demos. Really? Mm -hmm. Medical, explainer, um, uh, corporate, yeah. Explainer and explainer for sure. I understand that because 99 times out of 100, there is going to be music behind an explainer video. But wow, uh, I've rarely been in a situation where a medical, uh, a medical narration or a corporate narration has 
I mean, it's not very frequently that there's music behind them. So his rationale um, is, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, Jane from HR is the one who's making the decisions. And when she has two demos and she hears one that has, you know, that's fully produced from, from top to bottom, that that sounds more quote unquote professional, sounds better to her ears. Um, I don't think I agree with that. In my own personal experience, it's I'm not being hired by Jane from HR. Um, and I think there's some merit to having just the pure voice. Um, so I'm curious to know what other people think about that. Well, for my opinion, for what it's worth, is that I think you've got a valid point, and I think you should, if you feel strongly about it, you should suggest to J. Michael that you'd like to have one or two segments in, particularly the medical and corporate, um, done with. And when we say dry voice, it's not dry voice. I mean, it's still going to be produced. It's still going to be, you know, tweaked and edited and compressed right. and all that I just stuff. Without music. Yeah, but but no music. Um, so maybe that's um, something you might want to suggest to him. If he is as collaborative as we all agreed earlier tonight. In, that, indeed he is and is willing to. However, he you know wanted to be clear with me that philosophically um, he doesn't agree with that and that's not what he does. You know, but he is, he is collaborative and is willing to, to bend, you know, to accommodate a different approach. Well, uh, you know, Debbie, I, uh, you know, I know you a bit and, and you've been in the business a long time. And I think that your gut is as valid as J. Michael's. And at the end of the day, it's your demo. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't hesitate to, uh, you know, to be fairly insistent if you, be, if you feel strongly about it. Yeah, thank you. No, I was just curious because I had never, you know, heard of anybody saying that they, I thought the standard was to always have something in there that was just pure voice you know without any music behind it and all so certainly something certainly to think about a, my uh, one of my narration demos i can't remember specifically which one has no production it, well, i mean it does have production but there's no production music behind any of the segments um so i i don't think that that's that unusual you know i i did one last week for uh, coca-cola actually uh I've done several for Coca-Cola over this past year, but one that was a few months ago, uh, they really did a great job with it, and it's got music all the way through it, and I just got permission from them to use it on my next demo, and I'm definitely going to do that because it's, it's one, of the, uh, one of the pieces I'm particularly fond of. So, so Joe, it, it is a corporate video, and they had yeah. music behind it? Yes. Okay. Music, sound effects. It's pretty cute. It's humor, humorous. It's uh, w very well written. Well, there's no doubt that there's lots of budget in Atlanta for that stuff. <laughs> well, most of my work comes from overseas. And this one did too, even though ah. it's Coca-Cola, but it's for Coca-Cola Brazil. Ah, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, folks, just yeah. I, I want to take a break right now just for one moment. Um, give me a second. Because I once again want to thank uh, Voice Sam for sponsoring tonight. And I wanted to play a very brief video from Voice Sam. Just one moment here. the whole share screen thing here. One moment. There we go. Did I do that right? Can everyone see just a black screen now? Yeah, it looks good. Fantastic. Since the beginning, there's been a necessary evil both voice actors and voice directors, producers, had to go through to pay and get paid, and that's the one-minute demo reel. Take six-second clips, dub them together, and mail the tape to the studios. While the actor's waiting for a callback, the producer listens through and ten seconds in hears something they don't like. They could just skip through and find a part they do like. In reality, the only thing they're skipping is that tape across a lake. A lot of times, that one demo is all people will get. No real flexibility in physical media. 
but see, now we live in the age of consumer computers, smartphones, tablets, running water, unless you're in Wyoming. Why are we still using the same format? One dimensional thinking when we got the tech to render three. Take your reel to the next era with Voice Zam, the lightweight, quick loading, easily embedded, and customizable demo reel app. Voice Zam spreads your clips out, which gives producers full access to the entire spots. Before, if they didn't like something, they'd click off the whole reel. Done with it. Now they can just click to a new spot for something else, giving any talent at any level a better opportunity for casting. Get the new charts at the wow, Charts this sucks. Factory. PTs are all I need. Is this guy serious? The first beverage for you and your lawnmower. I'm getting there. I don't. Do you or a loved one believe the earth is flat? Uh, all right, there it is. Now the producer can get to what they want quicker. Someone's engaging enough to explain burger flipping? Go to their e-learning category. Push in a new series? Click their in-show section. See how they are with ADR? The possibilities are endless, but only a few clicks away. Plus contact info and social media links for both you and your representation. Your voiceover business wrapped in one widget. Voice Zam, the pocket reel. Awesome. Uh, so once again, thanks to Voice Zam for sponsoring us and making this happen. If you are interested, go to voicezam.com and use promo code open mic. Promo code open mic and Bob will double the length of your free trial. So who else has a question for us? Graham, could I say something else about Voice Sam? Oh, please, yes. You know, that, that player is amazing, and there's a lot of additional services, too, that you can, that you can acquire from him. Uh, I have his, uh, uh, is it called Zamtastics? Uh, there's, there's a couple of different uh, fine uh, tools that he's got in his arsenal, and one of them will allow you to embed your demo into your email signature. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really, really beneficial for me over this past year because I've gotten a couple of jobs just from having my, my demos embedded in my email signature. So there's a lot of great opportunity, a lot of great advantages for having the Zoom. It also has analytics so you can tell who's, who's listening to your demos, what demos they're listening to mostly, which is uh, quite beneficial to help you find your niche. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much more to it just than being a, another demo player. So um, I'm glad that you brought that up, Joe. And once again, uh, Bob Merkel, who's the guy that runs Voice Sam, is incredibly good at customer service. So if anyone has any questions, go to voicesam.com, hit, uh, hit the contact page, and send it along, and Bob will be back within minutes often. Uh, yes. with an answer to your questions. Mm -hmm. VoiceSam.com. And don't forget, uh, use open mic as your promo code. Who else has a question for us on training, on demos, on coaching? Graham, I had uh, a couple of statements just hearkening back to other things that have been said today. Carol, I, I can't tell you how happy I am you're here with us tonight. Oh, what a nice thing to say. Well, I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, Carol, Carol, um, I'm going to use your last name, Carol, if you don't mind. Sure. Carol Monda is a fabulous coach in her own right. Oh. And uh, you can get a hold of her directly. Just Google Carol Monda or you can book her through Edge Studio as well. Uh, she does coach for Edge Studio. So anyway, Carol, I'm curious now. I'm dying to hear what you have to say. What are your statements? <laughs> These better be well, profound. Like Oh my gosh, pearls, pearls of wisdom. <laughs> no, actually, uh, one, one aspect was that I just wanted to throw a few names, a couple of names into the mix. Uh, Roy Yokelson uh, also writes really well for people and does demos. Uh, he's, he's been in the business forever. He's in Jersey, very near New York, and um, is uh, very busy and works for uh, Antland Productions, owns Antland Productions. And Roy Renza of Star Trek is sort of this just guru of sound. He does everything from film to, uh, to television to just standard voiceover. Um, and uh, he also, I think, does a mix of finding copy for you and writing copy. But the point that I wanted to make, here's perhaps a pearl. No, it's not a pearl. It's just an idea that it's disturbing to hear people who have had their demo made and uh, copy chosen by someone else without any kind of consultation or, you know, in a sense, interview or probe into what, what makes, you know, your heart 
go pitter patter because you're going to do better with the stuff you're passionate about. So at the very least, I think whether you write it or you don't, it's, it's so important to find copy that speaks to you. And that's my spiel. I, I'd love to chime in and, and build on that, Carol. I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, yeah. I worked with Cliff Zellman on my commercial demo at the oh, beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah. And his first task for me was to think about brands that I love and to come up with about a dozen different brands that I love um, and to send them to him. And he took that information and then wrote different spots for me. Um, and each spot, we worked for an hour for each spot, wow. you know, a session. <laughs> and we didn't do 12. We probably did eight or something like that. And then later came back and decided we needed, you know, one more something or other. So he was really, really intensive in a, in a terrific way and took the time to even though he already knew me, took the time to get to know me better so that he could bring more of me to the process. Oh. Um, and I really, really liked that. Yeah. And did he direct you? Yes. That's yes. also the key. Uh, things that I heard <laughs> earlier were also surprising about, you know, not having direction. That's, uh, that's just so unusual. And I think h how impossible, you know, to make any kind of really sellable, effective, compelling demo without that collaborative aspect and the, and the second pair of ears. But not all, you know what, not all collaboration is, is, is equal, <laughs> you know. You have chemistry with certain people more so, I think, than with others. I think you'll probably find that with your own clients, right? Oh, yeah. Some people that you really click with and where magic happens, right? Yeah. And I think that may be true also in working with people to have your demos produced that I'm, I'm conjecturing. <laughs> yeah, but I do think that it's important that you, st that the people you encounter throughout this career, if, if you don't click and you are in a position of either training or getting some marketing material made for you, whether it's a business card or a demo, that you do need to click. You have to decide, okay, this is someone who speaks my language as it were. And even if we will disagree, there's a there's a respect a mutual respect for the uh, for the you know the the actual product and and for you actually for you to be promoted agree uh, carol i wanted to comment on what you were talking about um i've been working with uncle roy on a narration demo and the first thing he did with me is ask what my interests were what my background was, yes. what I like to do, Good. and uh, wrote the scripts accordingly. And to be quite honest, what happened when we went in there, he wasn't satisfied with what I was doing performance-wise. Hmm. And he said, I'm not going to produce this demo because I don't feel comfortable with it until you make these kind of tweaks and things like that. And I'm working on some of those tweaks and going to re-record. In fact, I was just talking to him, going to re-record within the next week or so. But that's how seriously he took it, that he wouldn't wow. put his name on something unless he felt it conveyed exactly what he wanted to convey in the way he does it. Back and to the uh, previous conversation, though, in most of his narration, he does use some underlying music. Now, he was a music producer, so that may be part of it, but um, he does use music in a, in a very minor sense, even under his narration demos. So oh, yes. I can tell you that. Yes, I think most most do, at least uh, the ones that I work with, both my private students with whom I do demos and, and at Edge, um, we, we tend to put music under the narration. And if you listen to, I guess, most of the agency sites, you'll, you'll hear that as well. But Car Carol, yeah. speaking of you and Edge, I'll give you 30 seconds to, to, to pimp out your uh, upcoming two-night uh, oh. two session. Wow, thanks. So I'm doing a short form narration class on December 5th and 12th from 6 to 10 in the New York studios on 45th between 6th and 7th. So edgestudio.com is where you go if you're interested in working with Carol on short form narration. Thank you very much by that, by the way. Um, but, you know, just back real quickly to, to um, uh, this idea of Roy's, you know, um, not being not being satisfied and, and how 
professional you thought that was. Did you agree with his ideas? Yes, I did, because there were certain things that I thought I was doing that I realized after listening to some of the raw stuff, I, I wasn't doing the way I wanted to. So oh, yes, I did. Wonderful. That's just, now see, to me, that's the kind of collaboration. And if you're open enough and not defensive, you know, but if you did disagree with something, you know, there's also, there should also be that, that level of, um, you know, willingness on both parts, I think, right, to... Roy Yokelson is, is, first of all, he's a bit of an acquired taste. He's, he's a character. So you, you have to kind of get Roy in order to be able to work with him. But I know of circumstances where he's actually refunded people's money rather than release a demo that he thought was less than of top-notch quality. He yeah, takes this incredibly seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what he can, uh, the gentleman who's working with him, do you feel comfortable sharing what, uh, what the rate is that you're paying? Yeah, I was doing a, a telephony and a, a narration. And uh, it's between those uh, prices we talked about earlier, between 1500 and 2000 Each or total? Total. Uh-huh. Is it one demo, though, or is it two different demos? Two different demos. Well, Roy's not the cheapest guy in town, so you got a very good deal. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Who else has a comment or a question about uh, getting getting uh, coaching, training, demo production? I'd like to say hi to Carol and Debbie, my dear Facebook friends. <laughs> Hey. 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 Uh, somebody had mentioned earlier about finding a copy and uh, generally when I'm working with students that are working towards their demos I'll tell them to I'll send them in the right direction to find their copy and then when they bring their copy back to me I know that's something that was close to their heart and because it was their passion and they found their copy and then when they bring it back to me I said what we're going to do now is we're going to rewrite this together and, and most of the time, I'll rewrite it, but I, I like for them to put in their, their input as well. Sorry, just taking a second here to unmute a couple of more people. I thought for, there for a moment, I thought, was it something I said? No, Joe, <laughs> it, the thing is, it was so... Com profound. I needed to reflect <laughs> on it for a few seconds just in order to get the full meaning of it you yeah. know, in my head and in my heart. I've always loved you, Graham. <laughs> That's never going to stop. <laughs> okay, who else has a question? Um... <clears throat> Sandy is asking, uh, going back to this whole thing about uh, about music underneath uh, underneath narration demos, what about IVR and telephony? I mean, I do a lot of IVR and telephony phone prompts. Never once is there a music bed underneath it when it's produced. Um, but I I'm willing to hear uh, opposing points of view. Is there anyone out there that you know does put music underneath their IVR or telephony demos and e-learning as well. When I've used clips from um, projects that I've done, sometimes it has had some music underneath it, you know, if you're doing on hold, for instance. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with mixing it up a little bit that way. And sometimes I also add in Spanish or an Italian IVR at the end, just to let them know I do that too. I think that that's clever, even without it being a Spanish language demo to throw in one at the end, just to prove you're bilingual is that's very clever. Mm -hmm. And in your case being trilingual, I mean, that's a distinct advantage that you have. Who else has a, a question or a comment about coaching training? Anyone have any recommendations of coaches that they've been working with that they particularly loved? Um, I have a question. Hey, Gary. 
Uh, is there a website that we can go to that uh, may have some uh, scripts available that, uh, that we can look at as far as uh, just anything in general? Uh, I'm just throwing that question out there to see if anybody has any answers. Well, well be, there's always the Edge Studio um, website. Uh, as long as you recognize is that the scripts there only use them for practice. Don't ever right. use any of those scripts in a, in a demo because everybody's used those scripts in demos. Is there anyone out there that will write a script for you? Um, I know sure. that the, some of the coaching will do that, but I wasn't sure if, uh, if there might be a, a site out there that uh, someone that strictly does that. Uh, there is a good friend of mine who does that. And if you want to send me your, Actually, I've got your email address, so I can email you afterwards with this gentleman's name. But Carol, uh, Joe Lesh, uh, who, are, who are here with us on the call tonight, I mean, most any coach is pretty experienced in either writing new copy from scratch or in taking existing spots and being able to alter them just enough to make them fresh and new while still... Um, you know, retaining the the storyline that was built into the original copy. Uh, but most coaches are more than happy and, and quite competent at providing very useful copy. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you a story that I, um, that I went through. One of my, my very first good demo, I had a locally produced demo here in my home market that wasn't very good that I got started with. And as soon as I could for, afford it, I got a good demo done. It was by uh, a coach and demo producer in Los Angeles by the name of Nancy Wolfson. And some of you might know Nancy or know of her. Now, Nancy's not for the faint of heart. She's, you know, a bit of a, you know, the badass, tough love coach. And if you know what you're getting into, you will come out at the end of her program a better voice actor. But you got to be prepared for the, <laughs> the beating you'll take during the, the process. The but drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah, she's a bit of a drill sergeant, there's no doubt. Um, but the point I wanted to make was I wasn't – because Nancy is this bigger than life personality and she had very strong opinions on what she thought that I was going to be best suited for. I let her do give me this kind of corporate business to business ad read for Boeing that was the lead, the lead um, segment in my commercial demo. And it was this kind of very corporate, um, serious, non-conversational, almost announcery read. And in hindsight, like I knew better at the time, but I, because it was Nancy Wolfson and because I thought that, you know, she's who she is and she's a superstar coach that I let it go, but I shouldn't have because my gut told me that that Boeing corporate ad was wrong for me period let alone to lead off my demo with so my advice to those of you out there who are looking at getting some demos done in the near future is as we said off the top um, make sure you find someone that's going to be collaborative make sure you find someone that is going to give you the best of their experience and expertise for sure but who is going to also listen to you and and respect your gut feelings because no one knows what you can do better than you can and uh, i think that that's an important point to be made and i still remember nancy getting mad at me when she discovered afterwards that i had gone and shifted the uh shifted the uh, order of the segments in my demo you probably think that there's something wrong with you if she didn't get mad at you <laughs> <laughs> well, she does have a she does have the reputation for being the the uh, the tough love coach, and she promotes that. She plays up that persona. So Bill is asking: once that you've got your demo in the can, um, to whom should it be sent nowadays? Um, you know, who are the first people that probably should be getting a copy of your latest demo? It's a good question, Bill. Who 
Who's got some thoughts on that? Once your demo is finished, it's in the can, who, was the, who were the first half dozen people that you should be sending your demo to? Your agent should clearly be one. Your webmaster should clearly be the second one to make sure that it's updated on your website. And of course, as a voice actor, you all have websites, right? Uh, third, think, uh, go ahead, Carol, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, that depending on the, on the type of demo it is, you know, the pay to play sites tend to be um, somewhat helpful. Um, although there's controversy clearly about voices.com, I would recommend voice123 or Bidalgo, but, but there are others, of course, that uh, Voice Realm, et cetera, that, that others, uh, you know, feel, feel good about. Um, but also direct marketing. I think some people don't, don't think anymore about just even going to their local, you know, hardware store and saying, hey, I, I think your telephony could really use some polishing up and, you know, here's my demo. Or to, to you know, send it online with your voice Zam link, <laughs> um, you know, to, uh, to places that you, that you've always wanted to work. But to the local, uh, voiceover production houses and also to your local advertising, uh, advertisers, yeah. advertising companies. When you, you uh, mean ad, ad agencies by that? Ad agencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a really yeah. big one that people don't often do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's that always overlooked. Yeah, it, it works well in markets like yours, Joe. Um, if, you're, if you live in Austin or uh, Dallas, you know, Philly, places like that, it's tough to do that in New York and LA because it, they yeah. just get lost in the shuffle within That's the That's true. Huge That's why I moved out of LA. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to just make a comment and what I did, I mean, I waited a long time and waited until I was ready to make my first um, demo, which was my commercial demo. And uh, what I did was when I got it back, um, I went to the co coaches that I'd gone to. I went to uh, voiceover professionals, peers that I had great respect for, and I uh, sent that demo out and asked them, they were kind enough to listen to it and send me back reviews. And um, there was a little swap, a little tweak that was done, which made it better. So I did that first. I vetted it with people, uh, professionals that I respected and that were kind enough to do that. Um, and then I took my demo and then I went out and, um, and I went and went after agents. Um, so before I never uh, even approached an agent until I had a demo that um, I felt was worthy of doing that because I feel you only probably have one good shot at um, and the last thing I wanted to do was put out anything to an agent that wasn't um, the best that I could do. So that's that's the first thing I did with my demo was I I made sure I got plenty of feedback on it before I ever sent it out to anyone. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that, Lynn. Well, we're pretty much at an end. I think with that comment, we're gonna to have to wind up for tonight. I wanted once again to thank Voice Sam for sponsoring the show. And please remember to use promo code OPENMIC at the checkout to double the length of your free trial period. Also wanted to mention that I'm co-hosting a new vlog called Straight Talk VO with uh, Kate McClanahan. Straight Talk VO is uh, a vlog where Kate and I discuss current industry events, and we're very proud of our first episode. And it was a panel discussion about the outcomes from the recently resolved sag after strike against the video game production companies. Our guests were Keith Farley, who was the lead negotiator for the union, and Jennifer Hale, who some of you might know, she's probably the busiest female actor in video games. And Jonathan Handel, who's an entertainment industry analyst, and he was the journalist who covered the strike for The Hollywood Reporter. I mean, we couldn't have had better panelists. So um, really invite you to go to YouTube, do a search for Straight Talk VO, and take in that panel discussion. It was, it was really, it's worth the hour of investment.
Uh, and don't worry, that panel is like an hour long, um, but our normal episodes are less than 15 minutes. So don't worry about uh, the fact that, oh God, I have to listen to Graham and Kate go on for an hour. Um, also partnered with Kate in Actors Sound Advice Masterclass series of webinars. First one's December 5th. It's about how to flip non-union jobs to union. Uh, we have Tom Alleman from Falcon Paymasters, uh, Melissa Exelberth, who many of the people here tonight know. She's an awesome voice actor, and she is going to make over 50% of her income this year on jobs that she's converted from non-union to union. Definitely worth checking out. Um, go to converting non-union VO jobs to union.eventbrite.com and I'll type that into the webinar chat box in just one second. So until next Sunday, work hard, audition a ton, and get lots of work. And I'll type that, uh, that Eventbrite link here right now. Good night, everybody. <laughs>